In sauna development, PDAs are everywhere, but what are they actually? PDAs stand for Program Derived Addresses, and they're a core concept for building on Solana. It's an on-chain account whose public key is deterministically generated from certain inputs that are defined, and it does not have a private key, which means it has to fall off the ED25519 curve. So this means that only your program itself can authorize transactions. You'd use this when you need a secure program controlled account. So what does this all mean? Let's draw it out. Let's start with what is this input data actually? Well, you have your program ID. And that is the public key of your program that's deployed on chain. And then you also have this thing called a seed. Um, so seeds are any type of data. You can have as many as you want or as little as you want. And they could be things like a constant string value. It could be a public key to a wallet address. It could be a variable um, data that is pulled from an account. Um, and right now we're just understanding PDAs conceptually. So we don't need to go too deep into the best ways to think about seeds to create for your PDA. In the next video, we're going to write the code in practice to actually generate PDAs. But for now, you just need to understand that all of this input data could be any length, any amount of seeds, and it does have to have the program ID. So the program ID is needed because you are signing with the program and you want to have this program ID documented to just validate that the correct program is signing on behalf of this PDA. This is all your input data. And now we need to get this data into a PDA, um, the public key for the PDA specifically. And a public key is always a 32 byte hash. So how can we do that? Um, well, there is a hash function called SAJ256. What we're going to do is we're going to run all of this data through the function. So this hash function is a cryptographic hash function that generates a fixed size 256 bit hash value, hence the name SAJ256 in a 256 bit hash value is your 32 byte output that you're going to need for a public key. So the output here is going to be your 32 byte hash. So we have our 32 byte hash output. However, we may or may not be done here. This Hash output could be my P PDA address, um, but it might not be. And the reason is your PDA has to not have a private key. So it can't fall on the ED25519 curve. This SAJ256 hash function could potentially generate a output that's going to fall on the ED25519 curve. So how do we fix that? Um, well, this input data is always going to generate the same hash output. So we can't really just run it again. Um, so we're going to introduce a new concept. Well, first, let's check to see. We'll add a little checkpoint here. We're going to say, is this on curve or not? Well, if it is not on curve, then you're done. Um, so here's our flow. Um, if it's not on curve, then we have successfully generated our PDA address. And it's that simple. And that's going to be your 32 byte public key. Now, what if it is on curve? What's going to happen? Well, let's just go through this flow one more time. We have our input data. Um, and that's going to run through the SHA256 hash function. It's going to output a 32 byte hash output that is your public key. Um, now we need to check to see is the public key on the ED25519 curve or not. If it's not, then it's successfully a PDA. Um, if it is, then we're gonna have to do something to regenerate a hash output that's not on the curve. So we're going to introduce this concept of a bump. Um, okay. 
So a bump is essentially a UA integer that is tacked onto the end of your input data. Um, so it's just a UA type, meaning you're just adding one byte to this set of data. And we're going to start at the highest value that it could be, which is 255. So the very first time you do this check and it says, yes, it is on curve, it's going to rerun the data, but it's going to take your input data plus 255 at the end. So it'll just add this bump to your set of data. Okay. And now it's able to generate a new hash output because there is an additional data set being added. Um, and then this loop is just going to continue to iterate until you're able to successfully generate a PDA address that is valid, meaning it falls off the ED25519 curve. So this is how PDAs are generated. Your, you have your input data that is defined in your Solana program. It's going to run through the SHA256 hash function. It's going to spit out a public key, your 32 byte hash output. It's going to check to see is this on curve or not. If it's not, you have your PDA. If it is, it's going to add a bump to your data set and then reiterate through this loop. Every time it reiterates through the loop, it's going to decrement one from your bump. So the first time it runs, it'll be your bump will be 255. The second time it runs, your bump will be 254 and so on. And this is the flow process of generating a PDA on chain. So conceptually, that's everything you need to know for PDAs and bumps. Now, if you want to see this used in practice and write some code to actually create a PDA, uh, check out my next video. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. Um, and if there's other topics you want to dive into and do some whiteboarding, let me know. Thanks.